October the 2nd, the most traumatizing and awakening day of my life. Me and Rob will be married three years in this October. And in those three years, God has really been growing him. And the way he has been dealing with him has been very peculiar. I mean, the dreams that he brings to him, you, you only know that it's from God because man couldn't think of these things. I mean, and he backs it up with his words. So the dream that you are about to hear is really a testimony from God. And I suggest when you watch this, you not only just watch it and feel that it's something to entertain you, but you evaluate yourself and you make sure your house is in order for when God comes because no man knows the day or the hour because I had to do the same thing. I remember it was on a Thursday. Matter of fact, let's take it back. Wednesday night, I found myself looking at these different YouTube clips and watching different out-of-body experiences and different films that, you know, they used to scare me. You know? And I would watch it and it would blow me away. It would catch my attention. And it used to scare me so bad that I would, I would wonder, I, I would, my mind used to go in place like, God, is this stuff real? You know, I couldn't understand it because I, I've never been to that place. So um, I found myself um, praying. I remember walking outside of, of my apartment and I was walking back and forth with my eyes closed and just started praying and I asked God, I said, Lord, if you give me an out-of-body experience, you know, I, I vow to share your word and to tell the people what I saw, you know, um, not expecting that God was going to respond back to that because I was just praying out. I was just praying, you know, uh, not actually looking for a response. And after that night, the next morning, that Thursday, October the 2nd, I had a dream. And my spirit left my body. It was like I was in my apartment and my spirit got pulled out of my body. And I would go in these different transits, um, bright colored lights. It was white. She like, the best way I can explain it would be shoo, 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 all the different flashing lights. And I appeared before a blue sky with no clouds. Uh, it was like a blue place. No land, no trees, no grass, no water, nothing. There was nothing there but a blue atmosphere. And I would see this atmosphere goes millions of miles upon millions of miles where nothing existed. It was like nothing was hidden. Everything was revealed. Everything was before your eyes. You could see it. And we was in this clear kind of body form, some form of light as a you would refer to a soul or a spirit or, or and, and I could see through, it was so transparent and in front of me was thousands among thousands similar to what I was and thousands among thousands behind me. And, and I knew that it was some form of a soul. And in the middle of my chest were seeds, you know, multiple seeds. I didn't know what they were for. And I realized that I was the only being that could actually move out of my place and look and observe, smell, taste, you know, feel. All my senses were active at this point. And so, you know, um, I began to look around and, and, and to observe the things that I saw, not knowing that this was a dream. I thought this was reality. I thought this was actually happening, you know. Um, and I looked forward and there was this great shadow way in front of me, way at the end of the line, with the, it was like thousands and thousands of people in front of me, and there was a shadow, a great big shadow, but it had no detail. It was like a, as a vapor. And I could, I could see that it was a shadow of something that was in the front. And, um, I, you know, I had many questions at this point in this dream, and out of nowhere, I, I, hear, I heard these words, depart from me, and this galaxy, this portal, I don't know what to call it. On the on on the right side of of God, you know, uh, or Jesus Christ, you know, I, whoever you, you you decide to identify that spot of judgment. On the right side of Him, there was this big portal that opened up 
and there will be stones of fire. Hey, normally, when you, 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 you get a lighter and you, you cut it on, try to um, spark a flame, but instead of fire, it was stones. And they will leak out of this portal. And whoever, whoever that guy said, depart from me, flew down this place. And it, the flame, the, the stones were so hot that it would burn everybody outside of that portal. On the left side of our, our body or our form, it would burn us. And it would, everybody would be like, ooh, like as if it was so cold or so hot, you would tell somebody to close that door. It's too cold. That's how hot it was. And the, the portal closed. And then the, he, he sent them so fast that the screams were late. I would hear, ah, like it was like, the part for me. And it closed up. Then the screams come, ah, and it terrified me. And then out of nowhere, something snatched us up. And like we moved up the line. And I began to think, I, I didn't understand where we was. I'm like, oh my God, maybe this is judgment. Yeah, my, you know, I had many questions, and I would hear, depart me, shoo, boo, depart me, shoo, boo, depart from me, shoo, boo. and all these different people will be sent to hell. And the part that scared me the most was the people that were getting judged, you could hear when God was talking to them, and you could hear everything they got judged from. So if somebody went to hell for something that you know you struggle with in your life, you know where you were going. And so I'm just saying people go, shoot, sit there, boo, boo. But I, I'm seeing the flame and it's just constantly burning everybody outside that haven't been judged yet. And I could hear some of the people um, talking to God. And um, I remember there was a woman, you know, blonde hair. And God was talking to her. He said, I'm not judging you for what you put on Facebook. But I'm judging you on how everybody else received it. 300,000 people were led astray by one of her Facebook posts. And he said their blood was on her hands. And I don't know what he said, the ball for me. And I'm talking about, I couldn't express how powerful his words were. It's as if he said, the ball for me and everything shook. And she was like, she was sent with great force. And the portal opened up, boom. She was going to fly. And it was close. And like, ah! The screams were so late, it terrified me. People, uh, adultery, uh, 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 fornication, uh, so many different things that I could actually hear. And people in front of me were terrified because a, a lot of those people were struggling or went through the same situation and they never repented. So I, thousand, one thousand, sent here, sent here. They would go, they were flying, they was flying so fast. I've never seen something so fast. And it got to the point where I was next in line, and he called me up, and he started talking to me. And keep in mind that our life held uh, held us hand to hand. So anything we did in our life, our our life testified against us. So you couldn't lie because your life testified. Say yes, you did. You did this. You did this at this time. Yes, you did. And whenever God would speak to me, you would see a big screen, like you would see, as if whatever God says, it comes to life. And so um, he started talking to me and he started telling me everything that I could have did better. And, and at this point, you know, I'm like, okay, God, you know, I could do this better. I did it, you know, I did okay with it, but I could have did better. So he began to say other things and he brought up this specific woman. And he asked me, why didn't I forgive her? And he gave me her specific name. I'm not gonna say it, he gave me her specific name. And I knew exactly what he was talking about. He asked me, why didn't I forgive her? I said, I did, God, I did forgive her. He said, well, uh, if you forgave her, when you get on the phone and talk to her, why is it that you treat her like the situation happened all over again? And I'm like, God, but I, I did forgive her. He said, well, if you forgave her, why are those seeds still in your chest? And I looked down, I was like, oh my God, that's what those are for. Those are seeds of what I did in my life the things I didn't forgive. So he was talking to me and I was like, oh my God. And he told me, he looked at me and said, because you didn't forgive her, I didn't forgive you some of your sins. And I was like, oh my God. And he started telling me so many other things and he ain't told me not one good thing yet. 
And at this point, I'm getting terrified because my mind is starting out going to a place where I'm imagining how hot this, this fire is going to be when this portal open. And so, you know, I'm, I'm scared. I, I didn't know how to explain how terrified I was. I, words can't describe. When you meet God, faith, words can't describe how terrifying it is to look your creator face to face. Where there, there's nothing hid from him. There's nothing. Your inner thoughts are revealed before him. Your, your how your, your perception, how you feel, everything that host you hosted in this body is presented before him. And so, you know, he, I got to a point where I, I just, I like, I didn't want to hear God no more. I was really turning my head because I was afraid that, you know, it's already made his mind up. <laughs> I was so afraid, and so I turned my head and. He would just kind of tell me everything that I didn't do right, or or I could should I should have did better. And at this point, I knew I was going to hell. I knew it. I, I I was fully persuaded that this was it. So I turned my head, and I was like, I don't want to hurt no more. But you know, my mind, I'm just, I'm just, I don't, I don't hear. I'm just really trying to imagine how hot hell is going to be. I'm like, oh my God, Lord, I have no more chance. If I go down there, I can't come back. Like, Lord, please don't send me to hell. Please, like, God, please. I'm begging you. And I'm, I, I'm more terrified. Ter- I was more terrified than I can express. And so I turned my head, and and at this point, I no longer wanted to hear what he had to say because I knew at this point, you know, I, I was going to hell. And I would have my head turned, and out of nowhere, there was this warm feeling that would come over the, the interface of my soul. And... I would turn my head, and it would go in slow motion, and the tears would fly from my face. And I looked at God, and I was looking at his, his judgment, what, what, what was going to be my judgment? And he looked at me, he said, face to face, you don't get it well done. You get it, you barely made it. And he stepped back and said, come. And at this point, I was so confused. I'm like, oh, my God. And on the left side of God, heaven would open up so soft with brilliant lights. Uh, the colors were indescribable. Like colors I've never seen before in my life. It was so brilliant, so, so, so pretty, so amazing. And the colors would blossom as they grow, and as they grew, and the heaven would open up so gentle. And I would walk toward that direction, and my hand would go in the portal. And when my hand went through, it got bigger. My arm went through, it got bigger. It was like I was growing into a, a, a mature state of a glorified body. And so my leg went through and like, got bigger. And you can see how big I got on the other side. And, and how my soul was being transformed into a glorified body. And my body would go through it. And, and the only piece that was left behind was my leg. And right before my last foot got in, um, I woke up. The dream scared me so bad. I was underneath our living room table for hours. I was so terrified. I was terrified to move. I was terrified to do anything because I was afraid it was going to be added to my judgment. I thought that was the judgment. I, that didn't feel like a dream. I could feel, I could taste, I could tell you how it made me feel. Everything was so alive in the dream. And at that moment, I was asking God, like, God, why did you give me this dream? He said, because I want you to warn my people that the things which you saw are the things that shall be. And I didn't realize that what I prayed for and the vow I made before God that he was going to fulfill it. Now he's looking for my aid to be fulfilled. So that's why I'm here talking to you right now. Forgive. Let go. I couldn't describe how many people that allowed for, for unforgiveness to grow in them and it, and it caused a bitterness which caused them to do things that they got judged for. That thing caused them not to make it to heaven. I was terrified. It was so many people went to hell. And it, it felt like I was, it felt like I was the first one. Like I was, it was thousands among thousands of people in front of me. That is scary to me. So today I encourage you 
to get it right with God. Get it right with your fellow friends, your enemies, that church hurt. That causing you to attack people in silence. Go get it right. Because hell is not worth it. God, God scared me so bad in this dream. But I knew it was for a reason. So today, choose love. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Believe that he died on the cross for your sins and my sins. And that he, he, he died, but he rose on the third day. Believe that he's the son of God. Read the scripture and apply it to your life. So that when Jesus come back, he don't see your flesh, but he see his word. I encourage you today. Forgive. Love. And watch how God changed your life. I thank you for watching. Be blessed.